Hey everyone and welcome to a Planet Coaster tutorial in which I'm going to be showing you how to use the block sections operation mode. Um, yeah, with uh, Planet Coaster Console Edition uh, released uh, on Xbox as um, uh, this video, as of when this video is going to be uh, uploaded and premiering, um, I've decided to bring you guys some Planet Coaster tutorials. You'll notice I am doing this on PC, however the same will apply to Xbox uh, because that has the same features and the other consoles as well you'll have the same features as PC uh, in terms of this just a different interface uh, yeah this is going to be a series uh, so make sure you subscribe and click the bell to name the notifications so you don't miss any future videos in this series uh, but without further ado let's get into um, this tutorial so yeah we're going to be demonstrating uh, block section operation mode today uh, now you may be wondering what is block section operation mode now it's basically an operation mode that allows you to hold trains uh, on block breaks uh, and basically separate in your coaster into different sections called blocks um, so if we um, basically close this uh, being an invert I've got here uh, it's been an invert I've been uh, building for a park and we just speed up the simulation speed uh, so the trains fly around, uh, you'll notice that the trains are not stacking in the station. They're actually stacking behind the station. Uh, and it's just, they're just going to keep going around for a minute until uh, I've closed the ride, obviously. But the, basically the last one's been dispatched. And then that's going to come flying around and go back into the brakes. You'll notice they're stacking uh, behind the station. They're not stacking uh, in the station. So yeah, this allows you to have basically trains outside the station. Uh, and basically have them stop on blocks uh, rather than all in the station uh, and this basically is representative of how most uh, roller coasters large roller coasters that aren't uh, kiddie coasters operate because um, I'm sure you're all aware that in real life you don't have trains all in the station uh, it's very rare to see that sometimes you may see if it's on free trains maybe two are able to be held in the station but you wouldn't see on a B&M invert a massive station covering the length of what all those free trains occupy there I mean you just wouldn't see that would you I'm sure all of you who visited a park and are in for UCS especially uh, know this so yeah it's not very realistic to just have a massive station like that um, and the other reason uh, in terms of realism here for having this is because in real life large coasters need to operate um, with block sections um, around the track that can basically you know detect and stop trains as a safety mechanism because yeah if you were to, if someone was to say dispatch a train and there was no block sections there and then the other train in front stalled and there was nothing to you know stop that train um you know the two trains would collide so basically with this option occupied uh, block brakes which i'll demonstrate here um if i go into edit and then we click um here when the game oh i just need to there we go if we go like that you'll notice that um that piece of track which i'm highlighting it's a four meter piece of 13 foot if we hover over this uh, you'll notice that it says a uh, block section allows multiple trains to run on track at the same time by stopping and holding them until the next section of track is clear for three sections to be available one more block section is needed than the number of trains uh, so yeah that's something I was about to explain in a minute so say you are running um, three trains on a coaster uh, you would need uh, four blocks uh, all together and the station I should mention uh, obviously because trains can stop there and also lift hills and also magnetic uh, holding launch sections which I'll get onto later they can all operate as blocks uh, chains and stations are automatically blocks and with magnetic launch sections as an option you, know, you can toggle on uh, for them to act as blocks as well uh, but yet yeah, chain lifts and the stations act as block sections it's, as it says there and once added block sections 
mode can block section mode can be run and on additional trains added in the ride into panels operation tab uh, so yeah um, I've also got three trains on here uh, EFM values on a block section do not contribute to the final EFM rating for the ride uh, that's something to note as well uh, but uh, yeah essentially as you can see we've got three trains stacking here uh, so yeah and that's what a block section is so when a train goes over a block break then what essentially happens as it said there uh, is it checks that the uh, basically block or section between the next two blocks in front is free and then it dispatches the train so if I do a little demonstration here uh, let's give a works example of this uh, in action uh, so we've got the station here and as I said that acts as a block break uh, like the actual block breaks in the game and then you'll see they've got to the top of the lift hill here this between the top of the lift hill and the station over here is classed as a block it's a section of track so we've got the top of the lift hill here uh, and then the top of the lift hill until oh, this train here uh, we've got a block break uh, here in front of this train uh, well, you can see that train stopped, it stopped on block break, that's a block and then we've also got a, a block here uh, where uh, between those two blocks actually where the other train is stacked and then we've got the station uh, in between uh, this block here and the station with those clusters of blocks so this coaster in itself has four blocks and you'll notice that we have three trains stacked in the station if we were to uh, remove uh, I'll give a demonstration now, if we were to remove um, this uh, section here, because you'll see we've got obviously four breaks, if we were to remove that and if we were to replace that with a normal break, uh, you'll notice that we only have two trains on the coaster now and I may need to, oh there we go, you'll notice we only have two trains now uh, because um, we've got one less uh, block obviously because uh, you need uh, because you need a minimum uh, you need one more block on the circuit than the number of trains so we've only got two now because we've only got the lift hill up here we've only got the block at the end of here and we've got the station here uh, so I'm just going to undo that because I want to run three trains on this coaster there we go uh, so yeah uh, that's the basics uh, now I'm going to talk a bit about sort of best practices uh, for block sections uh, and we're going to set this testing again just so you can see the block sections in action uh, what I recommend having is I recommend uh, that you and we're going to do a tutorial later uh, covering operations in terms of when the rides are open and setting dispatch times and things like that but I want to split that away from this tutorial because I don't want to like you know overload you with stuff want to keep the points covered in this tutorial to a minimum I'd rather do that and just go over them in detail rather than covering like loads and loads in one video um, it's best practice on the coaster to have a final break run and those of you enthusiasts will know that a final break run is this section here at the end of the ride which basically breaks the train so that they're going at a reasonable pace uh, to enter the station and stop it's best practice on the final break run including the station in front of it to have as many blocked uh, sections as trains you have on the coaster so you'll n I, I mentioned before we have uh, three blocks obviously on this final break run including the station that can hold all three trains on the coaster it's best practice to have that because that will significantly reduce the chances of trains stopping on the lift hill and where possible you want to avoid trains stopping on the lift hill because it affects your excitement ratings for your coasters you know as it would in real life no one wants to be stuck on a lift hill you know it affects um, guests wanting to ride it less guests going to want to ride if the excitement's lower and yeah it's just not, not something you want um, really uh, so uh, yeah for this coaster though uh, we was not having a mid course break run uh, which I'll get on to later the only option for me to uh, uh, run free trains would be to do this as a demonstrator I couldn't get rid of a block on the brake run uh, anyway uh, so I mean yeah with short coasters it's fine you don't need a mid course because it's unlikely that a train would reach the top of the lift hill before 
a train in front reach the final brake run uh, but uh, yeah we'll get them to longer coasters and coaster with more trains later because uh, it can be beneficial to have mid-course brake runs for those uh, but B&M inverts don't typically have them um, uh, because they're typically running big trains and they're not typically the longest of coasters but some B&M inverts uh, like this would have one if they're especially long but uh, yeah it's unlikely a train would ever stall on the lift hill in this case unless you had stupid operations so uh, yeah but uh, as I said we'll get into like opening the ride and setting dispatch times in the station later because that's a different matter uh, when you're testing a ride in Planet Coaster uh, trains will just dispatch when once the section in front is clear uh, an example of sort of uh, surrounding block sections then is actually the Smiler crash in 2015 uh, the Smiler if you didn't know obviously has a ton of block sections throughout the ride with it having I mean, its two lift hills and stuff and what had happened with the crash and what caused that is uh, an empty test train actually stalled part way around the circuit and it hadn't uh, got to the end of the block it was on uh, obviously um, before the second lift hill because it stalled on the ride's back wing which is uh, between the first and second lift hill in that block and as uh, the ride should have done it stops the uh, loaded train at the top of the first lift hill uh, because it had detected that obviously the block in front was occupied however a ride operator actually overrode that and basically released the train for the lift hill uh, which is what resulted in the collision and the whole reason of block sections is to prevent things like that happening but obviously with the operator manually overriding uh, the, the computer systems that detected that obviously the section in front was occupied uh, that crash was uh, un inevitable uh, after that because um, I mean everything was down to gravity then so uh, yeah um, and the wind speed as well, which actually caused the ride stall in the first place at uh, high winds. Um, uh, but yeah, um, as I said, it's best practice to have your trains like that to basically re reduce um, stacking uh, or stopping on the lift hill and stuff like that. Uh, but, uh, but I'm going to go into another coaster now and basically discuss a bit more what I was uh, saying there uh, about. Uh, basically trains uh, for longer coasts or coasts with lots of trains it can be beneficial to have a mid course brake run uh, before I do that though I thought I will I've not really shown you this yet but I will show you uh, to activate block sections you go into operations and then under operation mode you've got block sections so you've got the standard mode there which is the standard coaster operation where we're talking about having all the trains in the station uh, being stored there rather than having block sections you know, it seems very realistic and another reason why I wouldn't want that on a real coaster is because then in reality if we had that and block sections weren't activated you know it would increase the chances of you know collisions could happen uh, because uh, there would be nothing stopping trains around the circuit you know collision could happen if a train stalled because you know yeah uh, that's why block sections is typically one used in real life uh, but yeah, standard is never really used. And then you'll see we've got lapping, uh, and that is typically that is only available for single train coasters. So typically junior coasters have this, where uh, trains can go around multiple times. Like you'll notice uh, rides such as the Runaway Mine Train at Alton Towers has this, uh, where it runs on one train, and it's um, yeah, uh, you get two laps on there typically. Uh, Sometimes you can even get free if it's a really quiet day. Um, so that's what that is. And then we got block section, which is the one uh, you should anyway uh, use most of the time when you're playing Planet Coaster. Uh, but yeah, here we have um, a Gers like Eurofighter, a very, very loose clone because it's not exact at all. That ending bit's completely different as well. Uh, a loose clone of speed no limits at Oakwood if you've ever seen that ride you'll see we've got a lift hill there we've got an airtime hill over bank loop uh, mid course heartline roll uh, which, you know it's almost identical to speed that is and then 
you know I was uh, I was kind of just putting this together quickly before the video so I just put a corner down here um, not that realistic a corner really or I could have done better with that but you know the main thing here is the block sections which I want to establish not the layout itself I'm going to do some more layout tutorials for coasters and good practices with those at uh, a later date um, uh, but yeah uh, we've got the corner down there to the brake run now I know what you're thinking it's going to be hard for me to operate a coaster on block section mode with loads of small trains like this so I'm going to be tempted to basically build my station with them all and no that is not the realistic way to do it it's the way I used to do it it's not realistic at all uh, for uh, rides like this uh, again uh, I'm gonna, gonna put this on on put this on uh, M, uh, closed and basically run the simulation really fast uh, but you'll notice here at the end we've got one two if you include the station uh, three is just gonna come around now uh, block sections and then we have got um, we've got another one here uh, so because I'm running uh, four trains on this so you got uh, one two three there and four there and then another train uh, you'll notice I've got like a block break a break a block break a break uh, short piece of track because you you are allowed to have uh, you know just standard pieces of track between brakes on a final brake run that's not breaking any rules or anything like that another block brake and there's some brakes uh, which leads me on to the point essentially with this uh, that you can't store trains on one piece of block section track you have to have a brake or a chain or not a chain lift uh, but you have to have either a brake or a different type of block section such as chain lift or something uh, between them um, for it to class as another block section if you had just have one long piece of track like with either a block brake or a chain or something it's just going to detect that as one block section um, trains can't stack on one piece of block section track uh, so it's best practice really to have your block section track in just like 4 meter pieces like that or 13.124 depending on what uh, method you're using and then you'll see that here I have a brake I've got a friction brake and you'll see that this is 13.12 um, meters because these trains are short and that's another thing as well uh, when you're including uh, for like the when you include uh, your block section piece of track and the brake or whatever track it is behind it it needs to be long enough um, to occupy a train without the train uh, basically backing onto the next piece of block section track uh, because if you if it's too short you'll get all sorts of weird glitches happening with like trains overlapping and all sorts and it'll basically break the game like you'll have loads of weird glitches like trains won't dispatch when the block in front is clear and stuff like that so that's something to note uh, but you'll see here I've got plenty of gap between the trains uh, they're not overlapping or anything like that um, um, and these are really short trains anyway so uh, yeah because they're only the Eurofight trains uh, but what I was saying then about mid-course brake runs uh, here we have a mid-course brake run you notice it's got one block brake on it uh, and trim at the end uh, so I've got all the you know I've got enough at the end to hold all the trains I've got whoop, let me spin around uh, as I was saying I've got the station and then three block sections to hold all, all four trains that this coaster has uh, so none are backing onto the mid-course um, when the ride is closed um, uh, which is good which what you want so you won't ever have trains stacking on the mid course um, or very rarely anyway but it will probably never happen on this coaster anyway because of how close the mid course is to the end uh, the reason why it's so important though on coaster with loads of trains to have a mid course brake run and Gerslai Euro Fighters I'm sure you're all aware typically always have these um, most 
most of them do anyway, unless it's like the really short model of Girls Like You're a Fighter Like Rage at Adventure Island. Uh, Speed No Limits and Solar Ride at Fort Park have mid-course break runs. Um, the reason why it's so important is because it would take someone much less time to load a train with only... Because you'll see these are only 8 seats. The B&M Invert trains are 32 seats. It's going to take less time to load that tra train. So you don't want to have trains being released and then they have to be held on the brakes. Because it's not going to take nearly as long long to load these trains if there was like no mid course there, you know you'd have to keep holding trains part way through the layout because with the time it would take to load a train like that it's unlikely that a car would have made it all the way around the circuit so the purpose of a mid course really is to split the track up into basically more blocks as I said so that then as long as the train in front is past the mid course, even if it's not at the end of the rise, um, and I've still got the lift hills taken into account here, but I'll get onto the lift hills uh, with these tackers in a minute. You know, as long as it's past that mid course, you know, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, over the lift hill and not the end of the rise, as long as it's past that mid course, the train in front can, you know, can go on to... Uh, you know, uh, off the lift hill or whatever, and be proceeding around the circuit, so you can have, you know, two trains going around the circuit at once. Um, yeah, that's the purpose of that. But something to note in terms of the lift hills is that for some stupid reason, Planet Coaster does not class vertical lift hills as block sections, even though in real life you would, because, I mean, we all know about the Smiler. You often have trains like stopping on a vertical lift hill sometimes. You know, it should class a vertical lift hill as a block section. So what I recommend doing when building a Eurofighter, you know, so that um, you're not relying on a train getting all the way to the mid course before the one behind can leave the station, is you put a block section basically here so that trains can leave the station uh, pretty much uh, when they're ready to. So, you know, as long as this section between the block and the station is clear, trains can dispatch. It won't make that much difference because it's not going to take a train that long to get from the station to there. But it's definitely something that's worth doing because uh, it's better than nothing. Uh, and it can help a little bit sometimes. Uh, but, yeah, uh, uh, you know, it's just be good to have. You know, trim brakes to slow the train down slightly. Uh, you should you shouldn't use the trim brakes on a final brake run. I should men just mention briefly because uh, friction brakes are more appropriate for that, or magnetic brakes. It depends what coast you're using in the game for realism. Uh, but trim brakes for realism on mid courses is good practice. And then have your block on there so that as long as the train is over that mid course. Um, the train down here uh, can go past this block or just whatever it applies on your coaster and go up the lift hill uh, on this type of ride. Uh, so finally then, uh, I know I'm kind of going through a lot here, uh, be sure to watch this video back uh, if there's anything you don't quite understand or you know, uh, comment down below. Uh, I just want to um, take a look at this Mac multi-launch coaster uh, as you notice you know icons my number one I wanted to put a Mac multi-launch coaster in here um, but the purpose of me doing this is because this is a coaster type that some people or some friends have spoken to in particular seem to have trouble operating in terms of the block sections and stuff uh, so I just thought I'd kind of go through this uh, quickly uh, I'll just uh, close this ride and um, basically speed up time so I can demonstrate uh, how I've arranged these trains to stack um, quickly. Uh, so, yeah, because you'll see we've got the station is a block section there. Um, we've got a block section here just behind it. And then earlier at the start of the final break, we've got final block section here. Uh, so we've got three block sections here. Um, I've also got three trains on the ride, so yeah, there we are. We've got our 
we can have all our trains stacking on the final break run which is you know how I said it should be uh, that's the best way to have it uh, so there we go and you notice we've got a bit of track here we've got holding break uh, I'll demonstrate that in a minute uh, when the train launches and then we've also got a second launch here now this is another coaster where sort of a middle block section between the launch and the final break run as it is in this case our launch being our propulsion mechanism rather than obviously the chain lift these are typically really long coasters you think about icon for example it's a really long ride uh, that I can at Blackpool Pleasure Beach I should mention just in case any of you for some reason don't have a clue what I'm on about but that probably applies to none of you doesn't it we all know what icon is um, but yeah because uh, otherwise you would have a train obviously having to wait at the start until the other gets to the brake run uh, and with this coast being so long that wouldn't be ideal for your operations obviously um, Despite the trains being quite long, 20 riders per train as well, not as long as being them invert trains, but yeah, when you're working with Mac coasters, it's typically 16 or 20 riders per train. Uh, Icon actually only has 16, uh, it's a short train, but yeah, like Blue Fire and other Mac launch coasters like that have 20 uh, seats per train. So yeah, uh, you know, I'll notice I mentioned before that. Uh, these holding brake sections, uh, I'll just show you over here with my mouse, you'll see. Uh, we've got LSM holding section here. I mentioned that these can act as block brakes. Because uh, if we go into this menu here, uh, oh, if we go into utility settings, you'll notice that I have, I've also got the launch delay. Uh, and I've also got a block section mode, uh, which basically allows this to act as a block section. Uh, you don't need to turn this on for chainless, as I said, because they are actually blocks at the store automatically. Uh, but, yeah. Notice we've got the holding delay. Uh, that's how much the train will be held there for uh, before it launches, providing that the block in front, uh, which I'll show you is over here on the second launch, uh, we'll get onto in here. Uh, I've got a holding blo block break on the second launch, providing that. The train in front has gone past this. This block over here will hold for three seconds and then launch. Or however many seconds you set it to. Um, it depends what you put there. However, if the section in front is not clear yet, the block will basically, basically hold the train for that three seconds or whatever the launch delay is. Plus the amount of time it takes for the train in front uh, to clear the bl that block uh, between first and second launch, and basically, uh, you know, go over the second launch and onwards. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that, um, and that's why I recommend having the block section here as well um, on, on on these rides to split it up because otherwise. Uh, the, the, basically the block here would have to hold until the train goes over the, uh, the over the second launch uh, and then in terms of having the block here uh, this is just good because it can allow you to basically clear the station so that the train behind on here uh, can basically go into the station and start loading so that can help improve operations um, obviously having this block here and then as I said uh, this block here uh, to act as a mid course because these coasters don't typically have mid course brake runs I know blue fire does but that's a Mac launch not a Mac multi launch um, but yeah that's in place of obviously a second launch uh, and that is the alternative option uh, to have a mid course on here. Um, but typically, when you work with this coast, these types of coasts, you just have two launches with the second and first launch, or however, and then if it was free launch, just all launches acting as block sections, pretty much. Uh, but yeah, you want to leave a gap here between the station and this block 
uh, holding break uh, because uh, I'll just demonstrate um, you'll see that this just is oh, that this acts is just enough room for the train to leave the station if this was any shorter the train here would overlock the station and then the train behind it therefore basically wouldn't be able to get into the station um, you'll see that moving there uh, onto the section of blocks so then uh, the train behind is going to uh, when it eventually gets around the corner going to the station but if the train overlaps the station um, the train behind won't be able to use the station as a block um, and basically that's going to slow down your operations obviously so that's something you want to be careful of um, yeah um, that's something to be mindful of now You'll notice I have a holding break here for the second launch. Uh, but you notice that train just stopped there. So I have the LSM holding section. And yeah, it's weird. Unfortunately, uh, I'll go into edit mode. Oops. Unfortunately, I don't know why the game does this. But uh, you'll notice if I click on this. And I go into utility settings. I have this set to zero second delay. So you'd think that the train wouldn't stop there and it'd just fly over unless uh, the train in front hadn't reached uh, this first sex block section on this final brake run over here. However, no, you'll notice in a minute when the train comes round, when it comes down here, perfect timing, it stops for a second and then launches. I don't know why this happens, but. Uh, what you want to do to avoid that is basically just change that to a 4 meter block section before the launch. Don't put this section after the launch because you want the train to be able to, it, when it is released for this block section, have it had it stopped here for some reason, uh, which would be very unlikely, but it's just best practice to have this. You know, have it before so that the train can get all that speed to get over because if you have it after. Uh, your train uh, is not going to make it up that hill or around the rest of the layout and obviously that would be a massive problem uh, so yeah uh, and that's another practice I should actually quickly mention with uh, your mid courses and stuff like that over here uh, make sure that they are higher quite a bit higher than the rest of your layout because have a train you know if a train was to stop there and you had lots of high sections after it, it may not make it around the rest of the layout. So yeah, that's the best practice to have. Uh, but you'll notice if we come down here, we've changed obviously that to a block section now. Notice when the train comes down, it's going to fly straight over there. It's not going to stop at all. It's going to fly straight over. Come on, come come around. Oh, we've got a train coming around. I think we, I think we've got one coming around in a second. There we go. And that's going to... Oh, it stopped because... It, yeah, you'd probably get whiplash if that was in real life. But it, it stopped because that didn't quite go around there. Uh, I should probably speed time up in a minute and demonstrate it properly. But uh, in terms of this, uh, just turn it up to 60 because you don't want this slowing the train down. Um, and then put that down to 1, basically, so it doesn't slow the train down at all. Put that up to 8, put that up to 4. Well, on maximum... Um, it won't just suddenly stop, drop to 8 miles per hour uh, if you do that. It it would do that if it was Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 and then just suddenly could go from whatever it is to 8. But it doesn't happen Planet Coaster. That'll just do no effect uh, because of the 60 and your break target speed. It's not... Yeah. Um, that 8 would only come into effect if the train was going slower than 8 miles an hour to speed it up rather than just suddenly slow it down to 8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this up, this simulation up, uh, to maximum so that you can see this train fly over the coaster track. And there you go, you saw it fly over. I'll just uh, slow this down so you can see it with the other train. Um, and there you go, it flies straight into the second launch. No stopping or anything like that. Straight in there. Uh, but yeah, uh, that is everything i have to show you in terms of block sections uh i hope you enjoyed this introduction to block sections make sure you subscribe and click the bell to enable notifications so don't miss any future tutorial videos 
uh, in this series. Um, I know it may have been a bit overwhelming for some of you not uh, not familiar with block sections, but I'm sure there's I'm sure a lot of enthusiasts at least have heard of them. But I know some of you, you know, if you especially if you're new to Planet Coaster, may not know know how they work in this game. You know, say you've just got it on console or whatever, or if you're new to the PC edition as well, uh, you may not be aware of uh, how they work exactly. But I hope this helped uh, you to understand things uh and yeah um so thank you for watching and i'll see you next time